Good morning everyone. So today we will have some basic knowledge about what is evidence law and what does Indian Evidence Act contains and teaches us. So without wasting any time, let's start with it. The next question is, which of the following is not given by Section 25 of Evidence Act? The options are A. Confessions made to the custom officer. B. Confessions made to the member of the Railway Protection Force. C. Confession made to an officer and a fera. Or D. All of the above. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, all the above options are correct. That means to say, under the Section 25 of the Evidence Act, confession made to the custom officer confession made to the member of the Railway Protection Force and confession made to an officer under FERA is not given. The next question is, a retracted confession is what? The options are A. Can be made solely on the basis of the conv conviction. B. Cannot be made solely on the basis of conviction under any circumstances. C. Can not be made solely the basis of conviction unless the same is corroborated. Or D. A and C. Both are incorrect. The correct answer to this question is option C. That is, a retracted confession cannot be made solely on the basis of conviction unless the same is corroborated. Moving on to the next question. That is, a confession made by a person while in police custody is inadmissible as per which of the following sections? The options are A. Section 25 of Evidence Act B. Section 26 of Evidence Act C. Section 27 of Evidence Act or D. Section 30 of the Evidence Act The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, under the Section 26 of the Evidence Act, a confession made by a person while in police custody is inadmissible. Let us understand what is Section 26. Section 26 states, confession by accused while in custody of police not to be proved against him. This section states that no confession made by any person while he is in the custody of the police officer unless it is made in the immediate presence of the magistrate shall be proved as against such person. The explanation of this section states that in this section, magistrate does not include the head of a village discharging magisterial functions in the presidency of Fort St. George or else, unless such headman is a magistrate exercising the power of a magistrate under CRPC 1882. So basically, this section states that if any person or an accused makes any confession in front of a, a police uh, officer or a police authority, then his confession, confession is not admitted in a court of law in any matter until and unless it is made in the immediate presence of a magistrate. Moving on to the next question, which is a confession made while in police custody is admissible under section 26 of the Evidence Act if the correct option are A. If made in the presence of a doctor B. If made in the presence of the captain of a vessel C if made in the presence of a magistrate or D all of the above. The correct answer to this question is option C that is a confession made while in police custody is admissible under section 26 of evidence act only and only if it is made in presence of a magistrate. Moving on to the next question that is uh, section 27 controls which of the following section? The options are A. Section 24 of the Evidence Act B. Section 25 of the Evidence Act C. Section 26 of the Evidence Act or D. All of the above. 
The correct answer to this question is option D. That is all of the above are correct. That means to say section 27 controls section 24, 25 and 26 of the Evidence Act. So let us see what is section 27 and what does it states. Let us understand what is section 27. Section 27 states how much of an information received from an accused may be proved. This section states that when any fact is deposed to us discovered in consequence of the information received from a person accused of any offence in the custody of a police officer so much of such information whether it amounts to a confession or not as it relates distinctly to a fact thereby discovered may be proved. So after having a basic idea of section 27 let's move on to the next question which is section 27 applies to which of the following options? The options are A. Discovery of the some fact which the police had not previously learned from the other sources and was first derived from the information given by the accused. B. Discovery of some fact which the police had previously learned from other sources. C. Discovery of some fact which the police has previously learned from the other sources and the accused has also given information regarding the same. Or D. All of the above. Correct answer to this question is option A. That is, section 27 applies to the discovery of some fact which the police had not previously learned from the other sources and was first derived from the information given by the accused. So let's move on to the next question, which is under section 27 of the Evidence Act, discovery of the fact includes which of the following? The options are A, the object found, B, the police from it is produced, C, both A and B, or D, neither A nor B. The correct answer to this question is option C, that both A and B are correct. That means to say, under section 27 of the Evidence Act, discovery of fact includes the object found as well as the place from where it is produced. The next question is, section 27 of the Evidence Act applies to which of the following options? The options are A, when a person giving information is an accused but not in police custody. B. When the person giving information is an accused and is in police custody. C. When the person is in the police custody but not an accused. Or D. When the police is neither in police custody nor an accused. The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, section 27 of the Evidence Act applies to the situation where the person giving the information is an accused and is in police custody. Moving on to the next question, under section 27 of the Evidence Act, which of the following options are correct? The options are A. The whole statement is admissible. B. Only the portion which distinctly relates to discovery is admissible. C. Both are admissible depending on the facts and circumstances of the case. Or D. Only A and not B. The correct answer to this question is option B, that is, under section 27 of the Evidence Act, only that portion which is distinctly relates to the discovery is admissible. The next question is, facts discovered in consequence of a joint information are what? The options are A, those are, are not admissible and cannot be used against the accused person, B, those facts are admissible and can be used against one of the accused person. C. Those facts are admissible and can be used against all the accused persons. Or D. Both A and C are correct. The correct answer to this question is option E. That is, fact discovered in consequence of the joint information are not admissible and cannot be used against any of the accused person. Moving on to the next question, the confession of an accused is admissible against other co-accused under which of the following sections? The options are A. Under section 28 of the Evidence Act. B. Under section 29 of the Evidence Act. C. Under section 30 of the Evidence Act. Or D. Under section 31 of the Evidence Act. The correct answer to this question is option C. That is confession of an accused is admissible against the other co-accused under section 30 of the Evidence Act. So now let us understand what is section 30 of the Evidence Act. Section 30 states consideration of proved confession affecting person making it and others jointly under the trial for same offence. 
This section states that when more person than one are being tried jointly for the same offence and the confession made by one of such person affects himself and some other of such person is proved, the court may take into consideration such confession as against such other person as well as against the person who makes such confession. The explanation of this section states that the offence as used in this section includes the abetment of or the attempt to commit the offence. So basically this section states that if there are more accused in a case and one of the accused makes a confession uh, regarding any commitment committing any crime or an act which is prohibited by law then it becomes the confession against other persons or the other co-accused also. Moving on to the next question which is Confession of one accused is admissible against co-accused in which of the following conditions? The options are A. If they are tried jointly for the same offences B. If they are tried jointly for different offences C. If they are tried for the same offences but not jointly and D. If they are tried for different offences and not jointly The correct answer for this question is option A. That is, confession of one accused is admissible against co-accused if they are tried jointly for the same offences only. Let's move on to the next question that is confession of co-accused not required to be an oath and cannot be tested by cross-examination. Regarding this statement, which of the following statements are true? The statements are first statement is no evidence within the meaning of section 3 of evidence act and cannot be, found, be the foundation of the conviction. Second statement, the only limited use which can be made of a confession of a co-accused is by way of furnishing an additional reason for believing such other evidence as exists. Or third statement, it is a very weak type of evidence and is much weaker even than the evidence of an approver. In So in the aforesaid section, select the correct options. The options are A, all that is first, second and third statement are correct. B, only first and third statement are correct. C. Only first and second statement are correct. Or D. Only second and third statement are correct. The correct answer to this question is option A. That is, all the above statements regarding the confession of a co-accused are correct. The next and the last question for the day is necessity rule as the admissibility of evidence is contained in which of the following sections? The options are A. Section 31 of Evidence Act. B. Section 32 of Evidence Act C. Section 60 of Evidence Act or D. Section 61 of Evidence Act The correct answer to this question is option B. That is, necessity rule as to the admissibility of evidence is contained in Section 32 of the Evidence Act. So now let us understand what this Section 32 states. This was the end of our first presentation. Hope you all liked it and hope this presentation or video was able to teach you something about the civil procedure. Thank you for uh, watching it. Thank you.